Well, good morning. Good morning. It's nice to have. Uh, we have some people in our audience, which is really nice. Our congregation. Great. Yeah. You can, like that? So we can hear you all? That's it. Good. It's like our drive through community. You just honk, you know? Yeah. Okay. That's it. Exactly. Uh, we're uh, getting ready again. This is the third week of Advent that we're celebrating. Um, and so there is an Advent reading. It starts off, and Kathy's going to do it for us. It starts off with uh, spending a second in silent preparation for worship. So if you could, just for a second, let's just slow down all the things that we are thinking about and we need to do today and has to take care of and all the things on our mind. Let's just slow down for a second. Just silent. Good morning, everyone. Today, the candle of joy is lit. Let's consider joy. The joy of the Lord truly is our strength for the journey. And how do others witness the joy of the Lord in you? Jesus says, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. We light this candle as a sign of the coming light of Christ, as the Lord has promised in days to come. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad, the desert shall rejoice and bloom. Singing. And if everyone would say, like it shall bloom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. Let us pray. Holy God, banish the darkness as we light these candles. We welcome this light among us for it to be signs of the awe and wonder that dawns in your coming to us. We lift ourselves to your glory and set us aflame with joy. Lord, we wait in hope, peace, and joy with all of your people through the ages and into tomorrow. Amen. One of the things that we do, we've been practicing since we've been kind of in this, is that we light a candle to remind us that we are all together in this. We've asked many of you to please light this candle next to your, next to your computer, next to your television screen, wherever you are viewing this service, just to remind us that we are connected to this illuminating God's love into this world. And so we light this candle this morning as we pray. Amen, amen. Well, those of you that are with us this morning, I invite you to stand as we begin worship this morning. And those of you at home, just stand to your feet and, and let's begin worshiping together and lift your voices to God as uh, we're celebrating the holiday season. You know, Christmas is among us. We're celebrating the birth of Christ. And uh, so we just want to sing out this morning and worship God. So let's, let's join together. Put your hands together and let's sing. Come on. For unto us a child is born. A son is given, a son is given. For unto us a child is born, a son is given, a son is given. The Messiah, oh, to see him, to see him high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love. As we sing, holy, holy, holy. For unto us a child is born, a son is given, a son is given. 
for unto us the child is born a son is given a son is given the messiah oh to see him to see him high and lifted up shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy 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 to see him high and lifted up shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy 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 Holy, 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 for unto us the child is born, he's holy, 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 for unto us the child is born, he's holy, holy, holy. For unto us the child is born, he is holy, holy, holy. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give it up for our band here. They guys are really rocking it today. <laughs> Oh, you may be seated if you want as we sing these these next few slow songs. God, we're so thankful that you came for us. So thankful that you loved us enough that you sent your son to this earth to be our savior. Oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel, that mourns in lonely exile here. Until the Son of God appears, rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Oh, come, thou day spring, come and cheer our spirits by thy advent here. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night. And death's dark shadows put to flight. So rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee. O Israel, rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Shall come to thee, O Israel. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. God, we just thank you today for coming. 
coming, Lord, that we might have peace, that we might have hope, that we might have life in you. God, we never want to let a day go by that we don't stop to recognize who you are. That we don't stop and take a moment to be thankful for your greatness and your holiness in our lives. God, we never want to get too busy or get caught up with the things that are going on in this world that we forget that we forget to call on you that we fall short of reaching out to you God you are truly holy You are truly the one that was sent to save us. You were the one that was sent to heal us. And God, we do not want to let a day go by that we do not rejoice in who you are. Not just those things that you do, but for who you are. You are wonderful counselor, prince of peace. You are the everlasting father. You are the alpha and omega. And you are holy, Lord God. And we worship you today. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to Thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty God in three persons blessed Trinity and holy 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 all the saints adore thee and casting down their golden crowns around the glassy sea cherubim and seraphim they're falling down before thee, which word and art and evermore will be. Come on, sing with me. Holy, holy, holy Lord God. Almighty, early in the morning, our song shall rise to Thee. Holy, 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 You are merciful and mighty God in three persons blessed trinity God in three persons 
the blessed Trinity. Hallelujah. This morning, Lord, we who live in a world of cities and tall buildings, one-way streets, suburban and gated communities, don't necessarily understand or know what sheep are like or what shepherding entails. Sometimes we do feel like sheep in our world, being herded by those do's and don'ts, ought and ought not, media, voices that we don't even recognize. Sometimes the din of the voices get so loud that we can't even recognize our own voice. Calm and quiet our hearts and our minds and our souls to that one small voice, yours, yours. And in hearing your voice, we hear our own voice, that we sing your song of grace to one another. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning. How are you all doing, huh? Uh, We're doing a seer, we're actually doing this, we kind of veered off this week um, and are doing a thing on Psalms 23, which probably most everybody knows, you know? I mean, it's that one of those psalms that people are like, oh, I know it, got it, you know, got that down. And what I would like to do is kind of look at it in some different fresh eyes and look at it in the way we, maybe today, requires us to look at it in a different way. So let me, let me pray us into this, and, um, and then let's jump into this and see where we end up. Dear God, we, we thank you for life. You've given us this ability to explore these ancient words, these metaphors. God, we thank you. And we ask you today to speak to us and into our needs that we hear today what we need. See, God, we, we, we come online with all these worries, we come here in person dragging them over the threshold of exhaustion, anxieties. And sometimes we just get so tired that we become cynical. And so we want to lay it all down today, right here and right now. We don't deny it. We don't deny it. We just want you to invite us in to your house, to your table. So God, we pray for those people that are exhausted today, that you will breathe a new life into them. You will center them. So we pray for this peace. And in your powerful name, we pray this. And all God's children say, Amen. Amen. Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lay down in green pastures, and he leads me besides still waters. 
He restores my soul and he leads me in right paths for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the darkest valleys, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod, your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oils, and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. You know, this, this verse has a, a special meaning to this church because uh, one of the stained glass pieces here is um, the Good Shepherd. And it has a, a tremendous connection to this, of this being a sanctuary, a place that you are safe. And there are people I know that go away during the summer and they come back and they say, I just needed to see... I just needed to see the Good Shepherd. I just needed to see that because it makes, fills my heart with joy. Now, I get a kick out of this verse because there's a couple of things about it. And the one is that it's poetry. It really is poetry. You know, and, and we in this world, I don't know about you, but I don't read a lot of poetry like I used to. You know, I mean, it's not like you sit down with your family at night and go, now let me read this poetry to you. You know, it's, it's, it's something from a different era, from a different time, different place. And, and see, I've always been into that kind of whole thing, you know? I mean, I played Romeo in Romeo and Juliet. And some of you are going like, well, of course you did. You know, of course you did, Pastor. Who else would have played it? We had, we had this theater group called La Ronde, and it was in the round, so everything was done in the round. And so you would do these pieces and parts and things, and, and I, I remember doing that. I remember, you know, like, oh, but soft, what light through yonder window breaks is at the east, and Juliet, the sun, oh, arise, fair sun. I remember reading those words and saying, oh, I want love like that. I want love the way, I mean, I have, I have that feeling, but I've never been able to express it like that. Oh, soft, she speaks. To be a glove on that hand. These words. I remember just reading Shakespeare and just reading it and reading it and reading it and loving it because it was like so beautiful. The images, the pictures, what he was saying, the metaphors underneath it were just so, so powerful. And so if we look at this verse a little bit more like a poem, a little bit more like what is being said underneath this that we need to understand. Because sometimes we just kind of run through this thing and we don't really understand what it's being said at this point and at this time and what it means to us. You know, you have these images of a, a sheep and a shepherd, you know, and, and, and I don't know, I just... First, I don't know that much about sheep, and I sure as heck don't know a lot about shepherds. You know, I mean, I know a little bit of pieces and parts of it, but I don't know really that much. And so it's, it's a real foreign conversation. And then there's the image of the table and the host. And then it shifts to this idea of the house and the shelter. And so today, I'd like to just reflect on the idea that God led me beside quiet, still water, and that God refreshed my soul. Now, I, I, I had this idea that I would give you a visual. How many of you guys seen these things, you know, with the, the water underneath and the oil at the bottom, and you shake it up like this? You know, and you can move it back and forth, you great waves and so forth. Well, I think this is really kind of like one of those things that how would you how would you say your life is going right now? Would you just go like, yep, it's somewhere in that part, Dwayne? You know, it's right about there. In fact, Pastor, if you've got two of those, I could really get those going, and that's really what I'm feeling like, okay? Everything is up in the air, everything is disturbing. Still water? I don't know. 
I don't know. I'm really feeling a lot more like this. And I'm feeling like I should be shaking it in front of your faces. <laughs> this, is what, this is what my soul feels like sometimes. See, this idea of, of God, this shepherd, guiding you between still waters. See, the, the idea of quiet water or still water, it refreshes my soul. And the Jewish understanding of this still water is that it's still, it's, it brings you peace, it brings you quietness, it brings you rest, it brings you harmony. The ancient rabbinical teachings say that on the seventh day, God rested. God was still. God stopped. Peace, rest, and stillness. And it was something that had to be created. It wasn't something that just was. It was something that had to be created. And if you're putting it a little line and you're going like, okay, I think I need to create spa space in my life and I need to create stillness in my life and I need to create peace in my life and it has to be created and I have to make sure I do it. Yes, that's one of these understandings that you really need to create this space this stillness, this harmony. Because sometimes my life does feel like that. Sometimes my life feels like it's just so much going on. You know, if I ask you to describe your soul, the shape of your soul today, your emotions, your thoughts, your life condition, your mind, your voice in your head, that little voice in the back of the head, what would you say it's, it's saying? What do you say it's like? Is it, is it just like it's just going on and on and on and on? What's going to happen next? What's going to happen this? What's going to happen? And maybe that's why I did like poetry, because I kind of knew what was going to come up next. You know, even if it was bad, you still knew what was coming. You know, we're living in a world right now where I don't know what the next day is going to bring. And so my life is constantly being jumbled because I just don't know. I can't seem to grab hold of it. And I want to be a hold of it. I want to, I want to have that control or the idea of that control. The thought that I have control. If I understand what's going on, then I can have some type of control. But it seems like this this. Psalm is that God takes control. God leads me to still waters. See, the picture is this, this is my soul that God is leading. Now, the whole idea in, in Judea at this time, you have to understand water is precious. Water is really precious. I mean, it's unbelievably precious. I mean, there are times that, that it will rain and it'll be dry as a bone within about eight or nine seconds. And then there are times that it rains up in the mountains and there will be a 30-foot tidal wave coming down a strip that you were like, what happened? What was that? So the idea of a shepherd finding still water was something he was searching for. A place where the water was still, where the sheep could drink from it. These flash floods that appear then and now still. Turbulent, rushing rapids into the desert. And there are times we go through that ourselves, aren't there? That we have incredible things coming towards us. That we kind of live in these times we're really not sure. So the psalmist connects this thing to our soul. The actual wording for this, the, the Hebrew wording, would, if he restores my soul, which is really taken from the idea that he restores it, he brings it fresh, he gives it new life. It's where the actual word repenting comes from, the idea that restores my soul. 
This idea you hear that God restores, refreshes. I don't know about you, but I need that right now. I need to be restored. I need to be refreshed. I need to return home. Thousands of times you hear these words used about God refreshing. 71 times in the Psalms, this idea of this ancient word that God refreshes. And connected into that is that, is that God, and the word refresh also has, because the Jewish, they have word play that just part of that refreshing is that I breathe. That I breathe. Starting in Genesis 1, the idea that everything has the breath of life in it. And sometimes we just get the air knocked out of us and we're so, and we feel like this. <sighs> yes, that's what my life feels like exactly. It starts on Monday morning, just like that. Maybe part of what we need to hear and what is saying in the Psalms is that we have to trust in God, that God will restore my soul, will refresh my life, will bring my humanity back. And I think at this time, I can't imagine anybody telling me that they don't feel like they need their humanity renewed. Is there not a, I mean, can you say, amen? Yes, I believe I need my humanity renewed, especially at this time, at this place. Amen. See, I mean, there are times that we are in this and we just feel like a, a number. We, we just feel like we're cranking and we're this kind of mechanism that's going on and on and on. We do this and we do this, we do this, we do this. We're just looking for something that's normal. You know, it's like, it's like one more round of diapers or one more round of, you know, folding the laundry or one more round of making dinner that I really am not enjoying. but to have God restore your humanity. That God creates a time for you to breathe. And what I want to do today is I want to think about that idea that stillness is something that God created. It's something that we have to lean into. So if you are here, right here in front of me, or if you are online or wherever, I want you just to turn and really face the screen. And sit up and put your feet on the ground. And I want you to breathe in six times. Slowly. Just breathe in and breathe out. This idea of breath. It's the spirit. We live in the real world where we go to work, we have jobs, we have family. But God is calling us to slow down, to experience the still water. But there is no difference between this breath and the Spirit of God within you. Six breaths. You know, if everyone in America would just stop and breathe and let God lead them. All the great traditions, all the great religious traditions start with breathing, prayer, and meditation. God's got this one. God's going to direct it. God is going to bring us near still water. 
God is going to refresh us. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still water. He restores my soul. Amen. Blood pressure's down about four notches, isn't it? <laughs> oh. What a great reminder that we need to slow down. Sometimes I find myself getting all caught up in everything and I have this thing on my watch and it'll pop up and it says breathe. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay, I should do that. Let's just remember that to breathe in this morning. Let that peace of God just overflow us. And then we can be that peace to others, those that are hurting and are searching. This is our prayer today. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be. With God as our Father, family all are we. Let me walk with my brother in perfect harmony. Peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my solemn vow to take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. beautiful. Oh, so if you came in here today or if you turn this on and you feel that there's a theme, you're right. I think that we're preparing for peace and a revolution of love. New humanity, refreshed. That's where we're going. That's where we're heading. A couple of things I need to just remind you about. And one is that we will not be doing any more um, live services that we have people in. Uh, the virus has gone up past the numbers that our session believes is um, safe to get together like this, even though we are spaced out and we've We've done our hands and we've done our temperature and everything like that. But at this point, it is very, very dangerous. Um, so we'll be doing everything digital. We're working very hard at trying to make the digital service a service that speaks to you. We'll be uh, sending out some information about how you can connect your computer or your cell phone to your television so that you can actually see it on a big screen. 
We have spent a lot of effort and a lot of time preparing for Christmas Eve. We think that we have an incredible, moving Christmas Eve service. Um, and we believe that we can keep people safe. Our concern is we don't want anybody to get sick. We don't want anybody to die. And that is out there and it is real. So please join us next week online. Um, please join us at 10 o'clock. We start breakfast online. And then we, of course, go into the service by 1030. We would love to have you be part of that. Um, but we will be very, we protect, we do this, we make these decisions out of, strictly out of love, that we want people to be healthy. And that's our biggest concern. Uh, secondly is that we have our match Sunday next week, and that is really terrific. Uh, we are continuing to move forward for matching everything that we match up to $10,000. Somebody has come in and said, I will match every dollar for dollar. So if you give a dollar, it means two. If you give five, it means 10. Um, it really will help our church in the long run. And uh, also on that same day, which is uh, December 20th, uh, we will be doing uh, the memorial service, and it will be all online of Arthur, who has been with us for quite a long time, running most of our, um, our feedings, uh, and that will be online too at 3 o'clock. Uh, we'll be sending out invitations for people to be part of that, and we'll also be, uh, that will be listed on our website so that we have people there. Um, we do see light at the end of the tunnel. We see the vac vaccine happening. We see that there is light, and it is not a train coming at us. There is light at the end of this tunnel. And so we want to be careful so that we can get up and through that and up into this place. Um, so please understand uh, our, our concern is for you. That is our concern. So, my brothers and sisters, may you be filled with the peace and grace of Jesus Christ. May you illuminate that love out into the world. As you put your candles out, would you mind? Yep, thank you. Please remember that you are now the illumination of God's love out into the world. Carry that out into this world. Peace and grace to you all. Peace and grace. Noah? Hi guys, good morning. I just wanna thank you guys so much for joining us online. I am alone up here. I have my uh, Herald with me, but I just wanna thank you guys so much for joining us and and joining us on a really special day. Um, it's the third week of Advent. Um, it's pretty special. We're coming up on a time that I think all of us are both excited and kind of, I mean, Christmas doesn't feel like Christmas to me this year. Um, and I'm trying to search for it. So I hope all you guys are searching for that feeling and what Christmas is going to be like. Um, it's strange. It's different. I've been told that's supposed to be normal. I, I just can't rationalize that yet. Um, so maybe together we can all kind of make that special feeling happen. Um, if you guys are interested in joining us for Arthur's online service, um, it's going to be a private invite out to Zoom. Um, so just email me. It's, um, it's noah at tfcftl. Um, just go to the website. It's on there. And, um, and we'll get it out to you. So I just want to get kind of personal with you and say thank you so much for putting up with the craziness this morning. I lost my entire broadca broadcasting program, so I've had to figure out a, a whole different way to do it. Um, thank you guys for so much for joining us. I'm not sure if anybody's chatting or like throwing any love back my way, but um, I just want to thank you guys so much for joining us. And uh, Oh, yeah, she said hi to Harold. This thing's weird, isn't it? It's kind of like fun, but strange. 
I like it, but I don't like it. Uh, <laughs> you guys have a wonderful Sunday. Uh, do something fun. Social distance, go outside. Um, I found out that I can social distance at the park, bike riding with my son. That worked really well. So you guys find your special place, find your quiet moment, and try to find some enjoyment in the craziness. So peace and grace. Love you guys. I'll see ya. I lost my broadcast program, so I have to end the stream. I love you guys.